So Scar, Scar Keller from Germany, German Green, thank you very much for joining me here to talk about the situation with refugees in Europe. Now I'm sure you're aware that in the part of the UK I represent, the South West, there is a lot of concern about the welfare of refugees and I don't think our government's had a very good record and actually Bristol is a city of sanctuary and people are trying very hard to welcome refugees better. But I think what people are interested in hearing from the European side is exactly what the plan has been and why hasn't it worked out as well as we might have expected. Yeah, well, I think it would have been good already if there would have been a proper plan. <laughs> and I think not everyone in Europe is so um, engaged, like the people in Bristol. I remember we were there some years yeah, ago and sure. also talking to initiatives to help refugees. And I think the, the main problem we have um, in Europe is that we have a lack of solidarity. So uh, refugees arrive. Um, um, there is not even legal and safe ways for them to enter the European Union. They have to risk their lives to come, but then they're stuck in one member state, namely the member state where they happen to arrive, and that's usually a, a, a member state with land or sea borders. So currently it's Italy and Greece, but it has also been Malta before, Spain or whichout, whichever other country. And we need to make this solidarity work so that every country hosts refugee refugees and not just you know a few countries host a lot of refugees and now we actually had an idea we had a plan that was already a good start we still have a plan um, and it's called relocation it basically means that you um, take the refugees from Italy and Greece the member states most affected at the moment and um, relocate them to other member states so sometimes it seems that there isn't agreement by governments it seems that the governments are lacking in compassion and solidarity but I have to say to you that a lot of the people in these countries I think do feel that sense of solidarity Certainly in Britain. I mean, our government's got a shameful record, I think. Yeah. And we've essentially said, well, look, we're not in Schengen. You know, we don't have to take anybody. They can't reach us, so they can't come. So even refugees that had a legal right to come were not given the right yeah, to come. It's a disaster. So, you know, I suppose what we need to be doing in the context of this relocation plan is putting more pressure on our government to accept refugees, right? Yep. The big problem is indeed with the national governments and it's with the political will. It's not about capacity, you know, or like, oh my God, what of money. It's really a matter of political will. And that has been missing, even though the number is such is very small. I mean, in overall, it's been agreed that 160,000 refugees should be relocated to other member states. And if you think of the whole EU, that's not really a huge number, but mm -hmm. it would really help Greece and Italy, but also each of the refugees involved. So absolutely, we need to have pressure on the governments to make it work. Yeah, OK, good. So what's this we're going to be voting on tomorrow then? Perhaps you could explain a little bit of the detail of the plan and we'll be voting and I can vote on behalf of the people of the South West tomorrow to support your plan, right? Absolutely. So what we do um, in Parliament this week is that we have a motion of resolution where we really have a broad majority of the Parliament saying we need to make relocation work. The member, state, member states need to get their act together and they start need to get really serious about this. So and it's very good. I'm very happy that we got a broad majority. So it's our green idea we've been fighting for it but the other groups have all signed up apart from the far right but but uh, obviously because they are against the refugees um, uh, so I'm really happy about that unfortunately today in the discussion uh, the council was missing so basically the side that's the problem but at least we as European Parliament are really serious about that and we actually have a broad majority to say people and member states need to welcome refugees. Okay, that sounds really promising. And maybe I could just raise one last issue with you, which is about the humanitarian passport. I mean, you mentioned that people risk their lives crossing the Mediterranean. They tend to reach countries that are on the Mediterranean, obviously, like Italy and Greece. But if they're going to move on to other countries, they find that onward travel difficult. And it seems to me a humanitarian passport would be a good way of dealing with that. Yeah, we need to give, um, oh, like what, what we say for the internal EU movement, we have this proposal, Alternatives to Dublin, um, in which we say um, that it needs to be possible for a recognized refugee, or like a refugee, uh, uh, latest after one year to move on. Because uh, while, of course, we have sort of say an interest of having a fair responsibility sharing, it's also important that the refugee knows that if it doesn't work out in that member state, you can move on. The other question is, of course, how do you get to the EU in the first place, for which uh, we advocate both resettlement as a legal and safe way, as well as also humanitarian visa uh, that make it possible for people to apply for a visa for the purpose of applying for asylum in the European mm -hmm. Union. Okay, great. Well, thanks very much for everything you're doing for refugees, and I really appreciate that, and let's hope we get the vote we need tomorrow. Indeed, and thank you so much, Molly, and I hope you have a great success in Bristol. Thank you.